All right, so um, we'll talk a little bit about a different approach that we try to apply for, uh, for Geelong. I'll explain a little bit about the project, how it started, the politics of it. So today is not about the project itself, but about the process we took and the difficulties we faced dealing with state government and local government and how can we move ourselves to make use of these new ideas of um, uh, crowdsourcing. But I'll start with, with something completely different. Uh, this guy, Paddy Ashdown, when I was in UK, I only came to Australia about five years ago now uh, from UK. And we invited him in my previous university to give a talk about Afghanistan. Um, many of you might know him. Um, he was the leader of the Liberal Democrats in UK, and he's the one who did the Balkan, um, he, he was the mediator in, during the Balkan time, and he's the Un United Nations envoy to uh, Afghanistan. Regardless of, of the, what he said about Afghanistan, while we're having dinner, he said something very interesting. You remember, that's about six years ago. He said the problem of the world nowadays is nothing to do with politics or amount of terrorists or different ideologies. The general undercurrent of all that is governance. He believed that there is very, um, it's impossible nowadays to govern nations. That everything is so uh, mobile, money and people and resources are moving between nations that it's very difficult to have a proper governance. And one of the reasons, I, I thought about that at the time, and I thought that there is a point here and how that would apply to our business. Um, not necessarily architecture, but architecture is part of that as well, but also urban design and planning and the regeneration of cities. If this is the case, so where did the idea come from and how can this new participation model, the world nowadays is not anymore because of the technology, because how the social media, because what's happening around the world, the idea of governance has changed. So is the idea of engagement. So it's interesting what's happening in a place, places like Egypt, for example, where you can get in among the crowd, you get somebody saying that. I mean, what did that to do with Mubarak or whoever is going there? But it was a very important message, I think, that things have been changing very rapidly. Why it happened in Egypt in particular? Because of the pressure, economic pressure and social pressure and, um, and political pressure. But the idea of representation around the world and our um, uh, confidence in politician and what they do and the idea, the basic idea of democracy is changing. And we are not in our disciplines, I don't think we are moving fast enough to capture this. Of course, if in Australia, we are very far from that, mainly because what I call it is the culture of abundance. But in Europe, they are not very far from that. In Greece, they are not very far from that. In Turkey, in Brazil, in Madrid, and you know, Portugal have just missed it. But anyway, things are changing very rapidly, and I think we need to capture that changing in governance and in representation. Crowdsourcing is not a new thing. And we are talking about 1906 when Galton um, uh, in Abertoir in, uh, in Devon, I think it was in Devon, that uh, he asked the crowd of what they think of the, um, of the weight of an ox, slaughtered and dressed ox. And they came collectively, they came within 1% of the accurate um, uh, weight. From that point, there must be something to do with how our mind work and how collectively through communication we can create idea and we can create what, what we believe to be intelligence. So it, 
I mean, people start thinking about that. I mean, in 2004, there was a lot of uh, paper and conferences about this sort of crowd intelligence. Whether it's right or wrong, there seems to be some statistics to say that we can all be expert in a subject if we can uh, put our mind around it. So if we need to test that. So I put this together, the idea of governance and democracy and, um, and participation in particular with it. The other thing which affected the way I thought about that is I worked with Patsy Healy. How many planners are in here? How many planners? Right, not people. Patsy Healy is a very well-known professor in, in, um, in uh, Europe. She worked with us in Newcastle upon Tyne. And Patsy Healy basically said that this idea of Delphi techniques and participation and engagement does not work. It cannot work anymore in contemporary society, mainly because representation is so difficult. Who represent who? According to what? According to politics, gender, um, race, uh, ethnicity, uh, whether you smoke or not. Uh, sexual orientation. So we are so diverse nowadays in contemporary society that we don't believe that in presentation generally. So you can see where I come from now. I try to, to build that out around. When we had um, a project about regeneration of the city of Geelong, I put that all together and said, we are not going to do it the same way. Let us see how, what can we come up with. It was not easy, and I will explain how we came uh, forward. Some papers as well, before we go forward, the idea of crowdsourcing, of course, it is, uh, it, I mean, I, if we are here together and I give you a mathematical equation and you say, oh, we are going to have the answers, I say, I'm sorry, I mean, it must be mad. So there is a limitation of what we can call uh, crowdsourcing and where it can apply. The interesting thing that links to what I said before about politics, that um, some research have done all the, um, uh, some experimentation, but what they find that if you do that, there is a danger of splitting society between the people, which we call the crowd, and the organization and governance. And that's where the idea of politics can be quite uh, interesting. And that actually what happened in our projects. When we have to deal with the bureaucracy, with the state government policies, and the crowd having some ideas and try to push it forward and start to um, promote it. So we will go to Geelong where Geelong is an interesting city. It's about 70 kilometers from Melbourne. It sits on, the, um, uh, on Phillip Bay. You can see the entrance to Phillip Bay there, and Geelong sits around here, right? Um, it's a very um, rich city in a way. It's supposed to be the capital of Victoria. And then, you, you know, the false map, I mean, for planners here, it's quite interesting because they went, the merchant went to London and said, well, here is the, uh, how close Melbourne to uh, Ballarat, where mainly the, uh, the gold mines were. And then that's why the parliament in London decided that Melbourne become the, um, which it was false maps. So it was manipulated maps. So it's quite interesting if you think of the power of maps. Um, right. And the other thing about, um, before I, I, I always have uh, this on when I talk about Geelong. In the uh, 1970s in, in France, uh, during Giscard d'Estaing time, uh, there was that sort of um, obsession about how we can reduce, there was a, like a campaign about uh, reduction of um, drinking wine. So it said here, vin rouge vous tue lentement, like um, red wine will kill you slowly. The, the interesting, I, I remind you why I'm saying that about Geelong. Um, there was a lot of graffiti on, on, on these posters around um, the metro in, uh, in Paris, 
And uh, the graffiti basically said, we are not in a hurry. <laughs> and that's exactly Geelong. You know, you give them something, and they read it, and they just read it completely in a different way, and they're quite interesting way. You start talking about Geelong as a city, for example, and you're passionate about it, and you think that you want your city to be great, and it's 300,000 people, Geelong. It's not a small thing. I mean, it's like Newcastle upon Tyne or Liverpool, close to Liverpool, not Liverpool, but close to Liverpool. So it's a big city. But what they, the, interestingly, what um, they think, they look at you and they said, but we don't want it to be a city. They just want it to be a little town. They don't want, so 300,000 people, but so they always, you always end up with completely different view from uh, what you uh, promote. Anyway, when the projects, how, the, how we got the project? The project, uh, the project started by uh, pledge by the Liberal government. We went to the Liberal government and said, look, Geelong needs something to happen to it. It's really dying away. Um, we can't leave it like that. We need a big picture and so on. And they promised to give, give us the money. So they, um, uh, the pledge was to um, give us the money if they win the election. And, um, and they did. So it started by a democratic process in a way. So we used the democratic system to get our money and get us our project. So the election commitment um, led to a structure of that project, which the usual for parliamentary um, uh, procedure. So they expect um, deliverables and uh, legal framework and who's doing that and then how could we control the process and how to get the experts to do that. And this was the, the aim. Even the aim of the project, if you can, it was a big debate. They didn't want, they were very uncomfortable with these aims because the aims was something to do with to develop a close working relationship. This is the partnership, which is the core of this crowdsourcing. And I say why this partnership is so important to create what's happened next. And the party aimed to work in an environment where people can think creative, creatively. And that, if, if you think of projects, they don't like this sort of, you know, loose uh, ending uh, um, aim. So it was very difficult to get that. And then ideas can be explored and challenged. Stimulating conversation can occur. Non-binding con conversation can be held outside of formal roles. There is flexibility to debate ideas without holding to a position. You try to get any project with um, government funding that aim like this. It's almost impossible, right? So to get that was a big thing. If I didn't get that, it, it will be very difficult to move on to this idea of crowdsourcing. It's almost um, impossible. <clears throat> And that's how I put it to the um, to minister guy. It's just we say, I put it as, a, in a way, it's a scare campaign. That unless we have the big picture, we cannot deal with things like ecological challenges uh, or uh, population dynamics. And, w and this idea of uh, opportunities for developers um, could be very damning to uh, Geelong. In a way, I put, um, I put Harvard map on top of Geelong. Everybody gets excited about that. That's the power of maps as well. They, they love the idea. Because Geelong, um, uh, the Deakin campus in Geelong is very tiny. It's only architecture, really. It's only us. It's about you know, 4,000 students. There is few uh, um, uh, psychology department there. Deakin is not Geelong, um, in Geelong campus. Deakin is actually Melbourne um, University with 25,000 students there. So 
by, by saying that we would like to put uh, Harvard on top of, of Geelong and explode it into the city, get everybody excited. It went into the media and the paper and so on, and how can the university get? We get the vice chancellor on board, and everybody start talking about that. I'll give you the end of the project so we can go back to explain it. I think it, it just your uh, your system. Not. I'm just waiting for it to work. Uh, just loading, I think. Anyway, I'm, I, it's a shame that I can't show it all of it um, now. Right. I, the video we might be able to get back to it when uh, when finishing at the end. But um, we did the usual analysis of uh, of, of the site and how uh, Melbourne is growing around the bay, and um, uh, Geelong is expected um, expecting another uh, two hundred thousand people to move into the Bellarine, which um, this area here, as well as the the Geelong area. So. Um, we did obviously all the analysis about, uh, about that, but from our point of view as well, it's the population and how can we, if we talk about um, uh, crowdsourcing, who are these people who's, who's going to come to us? So we looked at the population of Geelong. The first thing we realized that is very aging population. So there is no young people there. So our um, uh, how, what type of um, uh, what type of communication we can have from this crowdsourcing? How can we we do that? And the other thing is the demographic, as you can see it here. While um, at the moment you can see the time that you can use technology to get crowd um, um, uh, sourcing through. Is, is very low. It's unlike, so, uh, compared to Melbourne, for example, which is going like that, you can see the, the area here that you can use technology and you can see a uh, different way of communication, while in Geelong is very different. So straight away, while we are doing a project at the moment, I was saying to Peter earlier, on, on noise mapping, using apps on, on technology, we couldn't do exactly the same in, in Geelong. So it's very important to first think about your your crowd and who are they and how you communicate with them. The other thing which was very interesting in, in Geelong, because we always think city centers are a product of the people who live in the city. And then we realized that what's happening there, that the migration uh, for Geelong, so here is regional Victoria, for example, what, uh, sorry, uh, Melbourne, you can see the net migration of interstate is dropping. That means that nobody is moving from regional Victoria to Melbourne area. The uh, net interstate migration is stable and the net overseas migration is stable. So 
it start to lose, in a way, um, uh, Melbourne to the area around it, to its suburbs. So it's moving out. While in Geelong, it's completely different. So the, the population who comes to Geelong are the, inter, um, uh, uh, are the intrastate. So that means that we would like more people to, if we would like to consult with people who are going to populate this city, it's not exactly uh, just the people in Geelong. And the key challenge is, is, is beyond uh, the, the locality as well. So you, you got things like develop, um, I'll talk about powerful uh, partnership uh, separately, but it's the transition from knowledge-based economy, which is the same, and we did that before Ford um, uh, closed uh, its doors in Geelong and before Shell uh, start to move out. Um, how to best use the mobility of global economy um, and create sustainable places and create distinctiveness. So this was the main uh, drivers for us and how can we communicate that to the population. And then we started. And when we started, it's as difficult as before we got the project. I remember having the meeting with all the stakeholders in one room. And I insist, I had this idea in mind, I'll show you the diagram after this slide, that I wanted to, to build up around um, uh, crowdsourcing and that we will not be the expert. It's a very difficult, uh, very difficult and very different approach when you sit around with planners and counselors and people from Vic Roads and, and so on. To say that we are not the expert and we are part of a bigger picture, it was very um, confronting. So the first thing we had is a question of democracy and representation because the people think that they are there to do the job. This is their job. Nobody else telling them how to do it. And we tried to break that down. That was very difficult. And then bureaucracy and crowd autocracy. Because how uh, bureaucracy of the system, of the state system, and this deliverable. So the first thing, for example, the local authority, the local council wanted to do is to have a planner. We must have a plan. We must have a project plan and a planner. And that's uh, tell us what is the... Uh, the time span and how we can plan the whole process and we start with the usual data analysis. So a data is it's all about data and evidence and we try to dismantle that and again nobody was comfortable with that. We, are, we were not against the plan but we were against the stages and the determination of a stages to reach the plan. So we wanted to have a more creative uh, approach and inclusion of other people into this. Um, and the, as I said, it's, it's mainly this idea and obsession of data will solve everything, so we need to collect everything, every single data, and against this sort of blue sky thinking, and don't worry about the data, and we will do it the other way around. It's almost what we tell our students in the architecture studio, in a way but we never take that out and we never take it to um, um, a wider audience. Oh, sorry, I'll go back because this, um, I'm going to zoom into that a little bit because that was the project plan. So we designed it in a way that we will have, in the beginning, we will have a complete um, design-based workshops. And when I say design-based, it could, could be people from all everywhere, from all uh, um, design disciplines. And we have that, and it was fantastic. I mean, I remember that they told me that I had the, the list of all the top designers in, in Victoria and in Australia as well. Some people came from New South Wales and from Queensland. And we said, we are going to invite these people to come to this workshop. And they said, that these people will not come out of their bed before you pay them $2,000 every morning. They all came. The only people who didn't come who were outside uh, the state. So it, uh, sorry, outside the country. 
it was fantastic to see that sort of support, and it was very important for me because my, my, you know, my neck was, was on the line in a way, because everybody's just watching this sort of mad guy who's trying to do things completely different and, you know, and upset everybody. And it worked very well. So I, w I was very pleased with that. But anyway, so that was the idea. And then we create this little diagram um, there is, um, is all the, the different workshop that we did it with people. As I said before, when we looked at the dynamic, it wasn't just about apps. It's about getting out to the people and not giving them a plan to comment on, but let them have the plan. Let them try to make a plan. But we have to frame it in a way, but we we'll ask them to make a plan. Whether it's workshop, or whether it's um, talking to them in the streets, or what, we did not consult with them. We made them the expert in a way. And then uh, two, uh, workshops two was about consolidated this into scenarios. And again, the word scenarios was a, a little bit um, a different language to, to some people, but uh, we built up these scenarios and then we made another one, which then we invited the agencies to come and say, all right, what do you think of that? And we came up with the final uh, preferred uh, solution. Option, I said, not solution. All right. So this is the plan which we worked on. The most important thing was building up this sort of partnership. These are the four partners that they didn't talk to each other in Geelong before this project. They just don't talk to each other. If, if you think of them, you probably have that in every single state. It is the university on one side who think that we know everything and everybody else doesn't know anything and they are just behind and you know, uh, we don't have to talk to them. The second group is the local council who think this is their business and nobody should interfere in that. They're just going to invite people if they want to, but mainly they are in control. The third one is the state government who think that the local government doesn't know anything at all and they are uh, uh, small-minded and, you know, and we need to go and sort them out. Okay? And the fourth one is the business group, which is the com committee for Geelong, who think that all these people are nuts because they don't understand the market and they don't understand how it works. And I am not, really, I'm not saying that, I, I worked in, in Belfast before, all right? I was the um, advisor to, uh, that's a, quite a good joke, this one. I was ad an advisor to um, Sammy Wilson, who's um, the Minister of Culture after Good Friday. Sammy Wilson was from uh, Ulster uh, Defense Force. So he's a militant, he's just a militant. He used to blow people up. So it was in Northern Ireland that, and he was the Minister of Culture among all, the, all this one. And I was his advisor. So you got, I, I'm, I'm British, but I will also be Egyptian. So you got an Egyptian advising a minister who's a militant on culture. So that was <laughs> just, just unbelievable. But anyway, um, so you got, um, uh, these four, why we selected these four? I actually did select these four, because if they sat together, I can have this catalyst for the crowd. And I will be in control, well, not just me, but the partnership, in control in order to, there will be no um, manipulation of the project from outside. We had to sit together. Every single partner thought that they will manipulate the project in the beginning. And we kept them uh, all together because the idea is to move from here into having one unit as a catalyst in the beginning that start to build up around it other layers. So the crowd here, this is what I call building the crowd and decentralization of it. And so building the crowd and then we moved on. Once you, you have that and you start getting information from all these bits, you start to have this interesting and exciting uh, movement. 
Um, and they, we worked as the, the hub in a way. And then we moved out to the contest of the concepts where we got wider, getting into the wider um, uh, audience. And then we get aggregation and preferred option. So that's how uh, we did it. Welcome to Vision 2 and what the people say. Vision 2 is about identifying ideas and opportunities. That's what we gave the people generally, and it went everywhere. Vision 2 will ensure that the public are engaged and that what they say is a critical part of understanding the voice of the community. Vision 2 has engaged the research group PeopleMath to go into local communities and discover what people are saying about their participation in and the future of Central Geelong. Interviews so far have been conducted at Westfield Shopping Centre, Beckwith Park Market in Corio, and Packington Street in Geelong West. To start, the People Map interviewer explains the survey and seeks permission to ask four questions. What's your name? Roy. Hi, Roy. Nice to meet you. Um, the questions, there's just four. And there's two things to remember. There's no right or wrong answers, Roy. And if you can be positive, that would be great. That's um, good for Gilog. I would like that. They're only all positive about the cats. The next question finds out what the person did the last time they came into Gilog and the waterfront area. Um, the last time I went shopping. <laughs> I just enjoyed the waterfront and went out on the pier. Uh, probably dined on the waterfront, yeah, down the beach. What did you do the last time you came into the Geelong and the waterfront area? Um, no, shopping. Have you ever Shopping. To discover where locals take visitors when they come to Geelong, people are asked what they take visitors to see in the city centre. There's quite good sort of all the waterfront area there, sort of how that's all done up and all that sort of stuff. I'm really happy with this. Right. I'll stop here because uh, you know it. It might sound it's it's quite there is quite funny bits in in this video. Uh, some of it is quite rude, so I move on. Um, but it it is very interesting that how the people. It's it's like a vox pop in a way, but it was structured in a way to get information, not just to get data. So it's a little bit different of how we played um, the information coming uh, from that, as well as the workshop which happened everywhere. So the workshop is actually where they sit down and draw and, uh, and have um, ideas. All right. Um, probably don't take them for things. And there was an, an another level of engagement in which we started to bring people who knows. So that's when the, the, the mix of, of the expert, well, we call them the expert, and the, the population, the crowd comes together. Because I needed support as well. So when you have all this idea floating around and the sky blue things, you need to bring people from um, mainly uh, international um, um, uh, experts in order to validate what you are doing because that gives the local council and the state government some confidence of where we are going. So we get um, Marta Schwartz. Um, I, I don't know how many people would know Marta Schwartz. Yeah, one, yeah, a few. Marta Schwartz is, um, is a Harvard professor, but she also a very good practitioner and she did um, uh, major international projects, so she's very well respected. And the other one, of course, is, is Young Gail, because Young Gail is very well known, particularly in Victoria, because he was involved in Melbourne very much, so we got Young Gail as well with us. Um, uh, Richard Summers, um, um, he's um, the dean of, um, uh, in Toronto, he was also um, a professor at Harvard. So we got different people with different expertise, and we got them into stages in order to just to validate what we are doing, that we working with the basic, based on um, the, the people's idea, but we get some validation uh, through. And surprisingly, that 
really worked extremely well. Remember, it's a very subtle thing between having the expert to tell you what to do and then validate it with the, with the people or let the people having the real idea. And we had a gallery in which they come, the people come every day and see what is the development of, of, everything, of everything happening. So it wasn't um, a black box for them at all, all the way through. So we then uh, build uh, the scenarios um, and the, the role of, of the experts, what's coming out of the experts as well, is to frame uh, these questions. So what question we need now to look and contest this idea, these 15 scenarios we, uh, we develop. And um, at this stage, again, it was a problem because the first Thing, when you come to scenario and now you are almost drawing a plan for a city, they say to you, good, thank you very much. Now we are going to have a consultant who's going to draw it for us. Like when I say draw it, like have the, the whole setting, the documents and so on. We insisted that this is not going to happen and it will happen by volunteers and there will be nobody, no consultant involved in this process. That was quite another uh, battle for us because, again, we had the money, so why don't you have the consultants? Because we didn't want that sort of ownership and people go come and dismantle it and manipulate the process again. So we kept our, um, our line all the way through. Managing the process of creativity and compliance. All project is about compliance, and then it was very difficult for us to, um, to do it on a creative uh, thinking because there are the reporting and what. So what we did, we had two groups. One is dealing with the process and the smaller group who understand and on the same wavelength with us dealing with the government reporting and the government. So these two groups work very well together and it was necessary not to have confrontation between uh, what we're trying to do and what it, the uh, state government and local government would like to see and to have it in their hand every time we have a report uh, coming up. Um, in that time, there was a mayoral debate. That was the first mayoral debate in Geelong. And that was very interesting what happened then because the crowd, if I can say that the crowd, because the crowd is not just the population in the streets, but it's all the other organization in the city, like Barwon Water, Barwon Health, and all the big players in the city. They start to, because they felt that they have a stake now, they have invested in, in this project and they become, their voice was very um, well respected in the process. They influenced the mayoral uh, uh, election. The mayor at the time of Geelong was very much against, um, against the project. Again, remember that local council was saying this is their business. So he came on the, on the um, that this is like a um, blue sky project, but really the city will have its plan. And he lost. He lost on that debate which I found it very interesting. And that shows you going back to politics of what the people want and the idea of representation and what they expect from their uh, politicians. And this is the project. I just have to put something for the architects, I think. Yeah. So we did the usual thing as well. We did, when we started working with the agency now, when we say something very vague about um, uh, inhabiting the city, it starts to become reality in a way with, with um, uh, the involvement of, uh, of, the, uh, of the agency. Um, we start working on the laneway as usual, creating an urban heart for the city. I'm actually was not, um, one of the thing is we started to look at how can we get the university to create a smart city. The idea of having um, how can Twitter and LinkedIn and so on can be part of the city structure. So we merging uh, because that this was the young people 
place and that was their idea is to improve and, and build the infrastructure for it in the heart of the city where the university is. And of course, that, that was the most favored project, which again, a very interesting thing that everybody in Geelong from the very beginning and how it built up thought about, it's a shame that we couldn't uh, see the, the video, we'll try to get that at the end. Everybody thought that the green spine, we wanted to have a green spine across the east-west of the city, in which it's, um, when I call it ecological spine, I mean it's not just palm trees, but ecological spine in a way that we can have food production and uh, uh, fruit and gardens and so on, that uh, it's almost agriculture in the heart of the city. And the politician, of course, in the council and the state government, they thought this is absolutely madness and traffic. And uh, the Vic Road said, impossible, this is the spine, this is the heart of the city. By the end of the project, everybody came on board that that what they wanted to see. It was amazing transformation um, because if you imagine that from the beginning and the expert group who's sitting in the, in, in the land will say no to that straight away. We will never be there at all. And so that also tell us a little bit about ecology and, um, and sustainability and how we are dealing with that in our uh, proposals. So that was the most, and I am actually got another fund to do uh, this picture, which is turning Johnston Park, one of the large park, into um, wetlands as part of the ecological spine for the city. And the city of arrival, the, something to do with the train station and, and so on, but I'm not going into the details of that. I think I'll be more interested in some more um, discussion. All right, and then it finished. And um, again, we have to hand it now, the whole project to the council. This is the bits which I didn't like, but I had no say in that that they started to think of what is the best way to deal with who's going to own the project and who's going to deal with that. And it's almost going back to the beginning, the very first uh, start, when we had this discussion with, between the state government and the local government. State government didn't want to deal with that at all. Because they thought, well, we don't want, after the Dockland in Melbourne, they felt like they would like to hand off uh, attitude uh, or approach uh, to development. The, uh, the local government wanted to absolutely, the councillor was absolutely terrified, the councillors, the elected councillors, all the way through this project. It, they were in the paper every day. They, it they were terrified for no reason. They thought that all this will raise expectation that make it difficult politically for them. It never happened. It never realized. It, they've never been uh, in difficulties. But again, at the end, when it was outside our hand in the university, we couldn't control that, and they insist to have a control uh, of the process from now on. And I'm just worried about that a little bit. But the minister, the, one of the things is the minister became premier in, in, during that time, gave us a lot of support, and uh, Dennis Napthain was very, very, uh, useful for us and still very useful for us um, uh, throughout this project. He understood what we're trying to do and he would like to, uh, wanted to see that as an example of uh, partnership and how the partnership of uh, the catalyst, the, how I, we started with this idea of a catalyst of a sm the key partner working together as a unit, not as a, um, a different uh, stakeholders. So that was a very different model, and uh, he was very interested in that uh, model. All right, so um, I end up here, but it was an um, interesting process. We learned so much from it. What I'm saying to you that this crowdsourcing does work. It actually does work, and it is very exciting, and people believe in it when they understand. People do understand the process. And they know when we consult with them just to consult with them. But if they feel that they are the expert, 
and they are the real one who's making the ideas and it, taking it forward. We are not just manipulating them on exercises. They know. The difficulties we had were not with the people or with the ideas or what we coming out, uh, came out with, but it was with the democratic, in a way, uh, structure. It was with the state government procedure as well as the local government interaction. It was very difficult because, they, because their procedures um, um, push a certain line of management. Because they, they, you, everybody's worrying about uh, the, um, the um, representations and so on and the politics of things. So that is stuffling um, the, diff the idea that we were trying to get it through. We did it there. I'm not sure uh, how uh, relevant uh, or not that would be to cases that you might think of. But what I'm thinking is it worked, and I think that is the future. And it's our role now, is because we did it with people map and talking to the street and workshops and things like that. But I was much more interested on getting to the people who are going to migrate into uh, Geelong area from around Melbourne. I was more interested to have the wider population having ideas about Geelong. It's not just the people in, in Geelong, because that is the future anyway. And how can we get that? And how the technology would allow us to do this? And how we can change the bureaucratic structure in order to facilitate this before we get a picture that what we saw uh, the demonstration in Egypt uh, earlier on. We are not very far from that. I believe that. But uh, you might have other ideas. Thank you very much.